Tonight, on This Mini Sucks, I'm taking on my biggest painting challenge yet. While moving, and dealing with this mini painting end boss. And it has come to this, I, Miniac, the final arbiter of these hobbyists' fate. I have no idea what I just got myself into. <laughs> Sucks. What's in this box? What did you do to me? What have, what have you done? Are you paying me back for what I did to you, or is this just something sweet? Let's see. I'm like so stoked. I've been like, wait, this box has been sitting on my shelf for like a week. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Oh, baby. Man, this is gonna be so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been doing Tomb Kings for a while, so you've been like repping death. Mm -hmm. I'll see what you do with life. That's why I gave you some death. I just like sent some uh, evil your way. But let's see. Yeah. This is gonna be crazy. <laughs> it is, it is, and we're both like, I gotta be prepared for some, some absolute chaos uh, in about a week when we got these all ready to go. Yeah. How did I get here? So there I was, walking down the street, minding my own business. When I get a call from my arch nemesis, Nick, over at CC Minis. Just an aggressive greeting off the jump talking about, Sup, loser. I heard your minis suck. I was like, what? Who told you that? You got the guts to play for blood? Well, I'm your huckleberry. That's just my game. Ugh, hit him with that classic Kilmer. You think you could paint an entire spearhead better than me? Why don't we make it interesting? How about a little twist of chaos to shake things up? With a panel of celebrity judges to seal your fate. Loser is shamed. It's on. And that's pretty much exactly how I ended up with a random box of minis on my desk a week before I move with some mini painting heavyweights waiting at the finish line to decide my destiny. Cities of Sigmar. I don't know anything about these guys, to be honest. The only thing I really know about Warhammer is stuff about Tomb Kings. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, these guys look sweet. Let me check and see if there's any lore in the third edition core book. Cities of Sigmar, okay. The cities of Sigmar stand proud against the forces of ruination and disorder. From these shining fastnesses, hosts of mortal soldiery march forth to reclaim the realms, supported by all manner of bizarre Ironweld arsenal war engines and the potent mages of the Collegiate Arcane. The cities of Sigmar are the God King's great hope for the future. Each is a beachhead of civilization in realms that are still largely lost to the savage wilds or corrupted by chaos. They are shining jewels, though far from untarnished, set amongst a sea of roiling, choking darkness. They stand firm and defiant against endless hordes of enemies who would see Sigmar's works cast down. Take up thy blade once more. Okay, so the models are built and primed, and it is time to tackle the difficult process of painting these crazy detailed minis. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do about these. Um, this is definitely the most like detailed box of miniatures I've ever built. Um, the idea of getting paint on these is pretty intimidating. I, I don't know where I'm gonna start. The gods of chaos are here to guide me on this journey um, because I am lost and I must be found. Nick, if you draw non-metallic metal and I have to do NMM on this box, we're not friends anymore. Let's see. <laughs> All right, Ryan, so you assembled your city. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost done with my army too, but you're ready for your twist. So let's see what chaos is about to fall onto your city of Sigmar. Is it gonna be the mark of Nurgle, making your things all rusty, crusty, and gross? The mark of Slanesh, tempting you into spending way too long on this project in the form of OSL or non-metallic metal? Is it gonna be the mark of Zinch, forcing you to use a random color on all of your minis? Or is it gonna be the mark of Corn, slathering your soldiers in a slurry of sinew and blood? Let's find out. No, not that one. Mm, no. Maybe. 
Brian, you are now compelled to use a random color for your collection as a major color for your paint scheme. Best of luck dealing with the Lord of Change. So I've got 39 paints here. Um, if I roll a 40, I'll go back to the beginning and start at black. Otherwise, uh, uniform gray will be two. And we'll go from there. Um, all right, let's see what the Lord of Change has in store for me. Forty. <laughs> black. Why is it all black? Well, actually, black isn't a color. So it's the absence of color and the spectrum of colors. You go from black, which is no color, all the way through to white, which is every color. So technically, not that it really matters, but um, black isn't a color. For the purposes of art, black is definitely a color. For the purposes of physics, it is not. But it gives a particular meaning to anything else it interacts with, like a zero in math or silence in music. With my newfound path provided by the gods of chaos, I decided to forge ahead with a test model. I wanted to go for like a Templar night theme, um, with some spooky gothic eyeliner vibes. With black as my main color, um, I had to decide where my other pops of color would be. Red and white would provide a lot of contrast, while the green in the fabrics would give some color interest and variety in the shadows. Happy with my scheme, I chucked the rest of my minis in my texture bin. I wanted to continue that gritty realism I had going, so I went with like a muddy battlefield texture. I also had some magnets on hand that I've been meaning to test out, and since I might actually be taking this army to game stores, I decided to magnetize the bases to make storage and transport easier. Oh. That's nice. I wrapped up the rest of the soldiers, and I was really loving how much character they all had. Um, as I was painting, Stories from the battlefield filled my mind, uh, particularly Uncle Terry always yelling at that that young, precocious prince trying to prove himself in combat. You know what I'm talking about. Look at that guy. They're always getting into it. Um, what am I talking about? Uh, the, <laughs> the Cities of Sigmar kit was so much fun to put together, and to see each character come to life um, was really dope. I only had a few days left before the move, so um, I decided to try and tackle the cannon next, leaving what I perceived to be the more difficult marshal and knights for last. I made some decisions on horse colors and uh, went with a different option for each knight. I thought giving the marshal a white horse would really help him stand out uh, the most as the leader. All right, so this is my last night here, but I'm gonna see how much I can get done on these guys before I have to pack up this room and basically put the big pause button on these guys for a little bit. At this point, um, I feel kind of good because at least every model has some paint on it. I guess it's kind of, I just gotta decide where I wanna put the last of my effort tonight. Decent progress on the Iron Weld Cannon, um, but I'm really tired. This guy's all caked up though. You got that booty pop. Wait. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pack.
Are you feeling any <laughs> Okay, time to move. This is where I put my magnetic case sponsor if I had one, but I don't have one, so this is just a baking tip. If you want to sponsor me and you're a magnetic case company, you should do it. It took a little bit longer than I thought to get back on the horse, but it was finally time to start painting the knights. I started by putting a dark mottled metallic called death metal across all the horse armor. Then I blocked out my major chunks of red and white across the rest of the knights. After that was done, it was just a matter of going through each model and picking out each one of the specific details. At this point, I wasn't feeling super confident. Um, I thought my guys looked cool, they just like, they weren't popping. Um, like I'm so used to using so much color and these guys, you know, they represent black well, but I don't know, they felt like they were missing something. And I also saw a preview of what Nick was working on. Oh my God. <laughs> I was starting to sweat a little bit, so I knew I had to kick it up a notch. I dug through my bits bin and chopped up some old chaos models to really lean into that grim and bleak look I had going. Oh yeah, that's nice. Initially, I was going to try and freehand some demonic or satanic symbols, or and, demonic and satanic symbols across the army. I practiced drawing them for a bit, but when it came time to actually try it on the models, it was just not happening. I already thought they were looking a little muddy, so I wanted the symbols to be super crispy. I busted out the transfers from the box and applied them across the army. It made such a difference immediately and I was getting hype. And why not go for extra credit? I needed to paint up my spearhead terrain, and some dude had a video on spearhead terrain, paint fast. Um, so I just followed along, and now I have a nice set of ruins for my gothic soldiers to trample through. And just like that, a project that was supposed to take two weeks and ended up taking three months uh, was over. I was finished. And it was time for the world to see what I had done. It was time to unleash the fury of the Knights of Null. I just keep rewatching the reveal. I keep noticing more and more little things. Oh my god. Seriously, the editing, it's like the intro to like an NFL game and they're introducing the, the teams. 
Wow, phenomenal. The paint job. Fantastic. The way that you incorporated black into just not only like the armor but the the feel of the army by making them look like like really like my chemical romance feature these are incredible man absolutely incredible i had done all i could it was in the judge's hands now yeah um okay so i've actually after watching it again i've actually changed my mind the city's the city's army uh, really cool. I like kind of kind of reminded me a little bit of Black Templars, the color scheme with the white, the black, and then red in there as a complementary color. Um, I like that. I thought it was pretty cool. Simple, subtle, good use of uh, the red as a pop color. I liked it. Um, I also thought maybe they were the the painter was going for something unusual with the eyes, maybe an undead kind of thing or something. I don't know. It just seemed that way to me. The flame sheeter quartz, it's an unusual approach uh, for the for the color scheme. And um, my first reaction to it was like, uh, nah, that's that's just not that's just not it. But seeing it again, yeah, I've changed my mind. I'm gonna vote for the flesh eater quartz. It just struck me as is different um in a kind of a what I would say is a bold approach for flesh eater quartz. All right, let's see what scratch bashing has to say. Give me some points, man. Yes, logically I. Scratch bashing, of all people, would be chosen to judge a painting challenge. All right, let's see the entries on my fake video phone. Boop. Whoa, instantly with the painted volumetric smoke fog effect. Wait, that's just real smoke. Okay, okay, clean, unified. We got this guy. And I think I see some vertex geese on that bronze armor. Got a good distinction between the mounted units and the more rough and tumble, like, infantry dudes. This is double blind judging. I, I don't even know what game this is for. Is that... Freehand? Oh, if that's freehand, that's awesome. Well, unless it's just a transfer. If it's a transfer, then really, that's cheating. But I guess cheating has been kind of getting a bad rap lately, and it could really use the W. Winner, Genyo. I had secured scratch bashing support, and Nick had successfully courted Steve Herner's favor. It all came down to Scott the Miniature Maniac's vote. One, Scotty. Don't do me dirty, bud. Come on, man. I'm really impressed with both of their videos, honestly. Like the the presentation is top notch. This is a this is a very different scheme. Very grim and dark. Oh, it's gonna be hard to compare these two. <laughs> I love the bib on that guy. <laughs> but the Citizen Sigmar Army, something else to consider is that there's just more models as well. So there's more to paint, and so maybe maybe the quality can be a little bit lower on that, and it's a little bit accept more acceptable. Honestly, this is tough because it's two different kinds of armies painted in two very different styles. All right, I've determined it. Both really great armies, very difficult to compare these two different approaches to miniature painting, but my personal favorite, um, I think, are Flesh Eater Courts. The vampire virus is real. <laughs> I think ultimately the most important lesson here is that both of these armies are beautifully painted and any hobbyist would feel really happy to have them on the table for a game. It's hard to pick one that's, that's the best, but we try. Well, there you have it. My muted and gothic knights were slain by uh, Nick's neon flesh eaters. Who would have thought? Yeah, blue and pink looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I gotta admit, that twist threw me for a loop. Um, you know, I, I really am so used to working with a lot of color. Well thought, Nick, I think you earned it. Um, your army looks awesome. And if you wanna check out what he did, um, head on over to CC Minis. Um, it'll be linked below. Um, he slaughtered me, guys. It looks awesome. <laughs> uh, so yeah, go check him out. Either way, I'm really stoked to have the Cities of Sigmar army in my collection. Um, it'll be fun to get some games in of Spearhead with, and my D&D sessions with my kid have a whole new town of dark soldiers as NPCs to talk to, so that's really sick. But a deal is a deal, and I gotta take my lumps. So here's a quick preview of my punishment. I'm an elf on her forehead. Nope, if you wanna see the full thing, you have to head on over to Nick's channel. I'm not posting it. Uh, it's embarrassing. He was diabolical. <laughs> I 
I also have to say, going through a hobby project like this with a friend can be a lot of fun. And it can help keep you honest and with your eyes on the prize and really motivated to see the project to completion. There are so many people hobbying out there alone, but if you're looking for friends online to share your progress with, uh, feel free to join my Discord, it's linked below, it is free. I can't wait for the day that my knights get to take on his vampires on the tabletop. He may have won the battle, but the war has just begun. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Subscribe. right there.